Hey friends, Kevin here, and we are starting the longest trip that I have ever done. So I don't know about you when you start to go on a trip or on a vacation, but I assume you're really excited, have that adrenaline pumping, and so do I. But also remember that I've told you to expect the unexpected when you're out on the road. So here's how this went for me. Let's do this thing. <laughs> I am, I am not even off my street. Let me make this simple. I am not stopping. Had it been the driver's side, I would have had to stop and get this thing fixed. Passenger side, I will get this fixed somewhere along the way on the road. A little fitting has come loose, a little bar inside broke that swings that back and forth. Whatever. I will get it done on the road. I will be fine. Let's get this trip started. In Tucky, on our way to land between the lakes, which runs through Kentucky and Tennessee, and we're actually going to drop down to the Tennessee part for today. If you've never heard of this place, and believe me, I had not before about three years ago when I went through the Kentucky part. West Tennessee, it is huge. There are dozens of campgrounds in this area, and a few of them are actually free something you don't find very much east of the Mississippi. So we're going to check out a couple of these free campgrounds and also check out what else is in the area. Well, this is worth this morning's drive. Guthrie, Tennessee, maybe? And a big cow to go with the uh, other giant thing. Cool. Apparently every convenience store down here needs a giant animal in front of it. It's good to know. Good to know. About five miles from Dover, Tennessee. Campground we're going to is about 10 miles from there. I can feel the excitement starting to build. Just a few sprinkles. 50, 60 degrees, but it is going to plummet tonight. It is going to be really cold tomorrow. 20s, maybe 30 degrees. I am really, really, really hoping for snow. Welcome to Dover, Tennessee, which is a really cute town Turn so left far. at the traffic light. Fire danger today, non-existent. This is really convenient if this works out. Turn left on Fort Henry Road. South Welcome. Man, what are those? We don't have those where I live. Those goldish, goldish colored little things. People in half the country are going, you're an idiot. I can't believe you've never seen that before. But I've never seen that before. I traipsed through the woods as a child in my area. We did not have whatever that is that turns that color. In one mile, arrive at Boswell Landing Campground on the left. Ooh. I see water. I can tell you, I already, I paid big money to stay in places that were not as convenient or did not have as good a road as this free or almost free place. Oh my god. Arriving at Boswell Landing Campground on the left. Hey man. This is quite a nice place. Yeah, it is. So they sell like an annual permit for like 30 bucks or something, $30, right? And they got a three day permit for seven. Right. And that covers all of land between the lakes. Yep. Even the Kentucky part. All right. All right. Let me go up here and get legal. Uh, you... See, this is another reason why I do not ever and will not ever own a larger rig. Anything larger than this. 
19 foot van has everything I need in it because you start getting into 29 footers and longer and it is hard to get into stuff like this it really limits where you can go camp and explore your height is even taller so you've got to worry about what you're going to hit even going down the road and under trees and that's just God bless those people that love it and I know there's people that will never do anything but that but for me I just it's just doesn't fit what I do or what I want to do the exploration aspect because I plan on running through these cemeteries and running through these battlefields and running through these old towns and abandoned stuff and half unkept roads and, you know those places aren't maintained for overhanging branches and trees leaning sideways and having places to turn a huge huge rig around uh, uh, you're taught that three-point turn in high school to be able to you know turn a vehicle around on a two-lane road like this if you've got to make a, a turn to go back in the other direction I'm sure I can't do a three-point turn in this it may have to be seven or nine but I could probably get this turned around in an emergency, even on a little road like this. Anything bigger, you're trapped. You're going to have to try backing up. Sometimes you're going to have to back up for miles. And you, and you really don't want to be backing around stuff like up and down hills and these kind of curves and easy to fall drop a wheel off into that ditch line so that's the reason why I don't want a larger vehicle some people they're happy with it they've worked it out they know what they can do and they can't do more power to them they're probably listening to me and going I would never have a smaller vehicle than my 39 foot Again, it's the trade-offs. Uh, I'll trade off some space for gas mileage and mobility. Now, you guys know I have a minivan too, and I can tell you the smaller vehicle, the just easier it is to get in and out of places. And there's places I can take that minivan that I can't take this one. And while this one gives me a lot more comfort and ability to stay more places, when I'm traveling because it's so self-contained I can tell you I really like the aspect of having that minivan where I can just whip off like right there and run up in the woods or run down a trail or whatever and this gigantic 7,000 pound beast you know I have to look at a road like that one we just passed and I have to worry about getting stuck or do I have room to get out of the road? And if I get stuck in a minivan, anybody can come by and pull me out. You get this thing stuck and it's gonna be way more of a challenge. I believe I may be spending some serious time here several times this year that I can stop here on my way to other places. Hello, little deer. Don't get too separated from your mommy there. Oh, there's another little one to the left. Bounce on across the road there, buddy. Your mommy is over there waiting for you. I see her. See, these are the things that keep me awake at night. What did that used to be? Wonder if the little snow droplets will show up on here. If you look closely, there is a man fishing. Sticking to the branches a little bit now. The leaves, like you said. Yeah. All right, we've been out riding around all day. 
It is snowing outside. It is 45 degrees in here, 34 outside. So we're going to turn this furnace on. See how fast we can heat this place up. And we've made it up to 68, probably 45 minutes. All right, after our 27 degree night, let's see what outside has waiting for us. Steps are frozen over. Bitter cold day here though. The great thing about being on that lake is you're gonna have constant wind also. Feels great in the summer. But it is what it is and I plan on getting around and enjoying this. After some breakfast, a little hike will warm things up. Plan for this trip are places we're going to go, places we're going to camp. There's going to be how-to videos of different things that are done in the rig, improvements, different things like that, and a lot of interesting places that I can show you to travel and go to that won't cost you a lot or any money interesting things to see so come along on this adventure let's see how this starts to go mm -hmm. 